Okay, here we go, uh, Amy or whoever wants to view this video in the future. I uh, just wanted to learn a little bit about uh, objects and classes. So I'm going to show a quick little program. Uh, I'm going to make a program that just does some simple calculations. Uh, first I'll show you how a functional programmer would, would program and then I'm going to kind of turn that into uh, objects so that uh, you can see how um, an object-oriented uh, programmer would think and, and kind of handle the same task. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is go new project. Uh, we're going to select C Sharp. It's my language of choice for Windows. C Sharp, Windows, and this will be a desktop application. I'll just use the default uh, name to save myself time. It is a tutorial. Uh, just going to give me a little more room to work with. Uh, I already have the toolbox pinned there. Um, and the next thing I'm going to add in here is, uh, let's just add, add some text boxes. So, first thing I'm going to add, and we'll call this, and we'll just do some simple calculations. So, let's just name this text box height, and what is the actual text? Oh, goodness. Oh, the text is okay. We'll just leave it as that. Uh, this is my mind thinking it's a label. Uh, <clears throat> and then we'll go text box width. There's a good enough name for that. We'll just add in another label here. Label someplace we can display our results. And I'll call this name label perimeter. And we should have a text value here. I'm just going to put underscore to give it a space there so we have something we can see. Uh, I can just copy that. Copy, edit, paste. Just rename this uh, label. Um, we did perimeter. Let's do area. Good enough. Okay, and then uh, to go along with those two things, let's just put some buttons here quickly. Uh, button, and we'll call this. Uh, button cal per or calculate perimeter. I'll go perimeter. I don't mind if my spelling's off. It's okay. Let's paste. I'm just going to modify the name of this one to be area and the same thing here just to give me a UI to work with button cal here good enough um, okay so we have a basic UI now uh, we just obviously this is going to be um, something that would calculate various calculations on a box um, if I wanted to calculate the perimeter of my box I would first create an event handler and in Windows Forms applications you can do that quickly just by uh, you can either do it down here but I'm just going to double click it's going to give me the default which is button cal per click okay and so in this case <coughs> in order to calculate the perimeter um, what I would do let's make a function just to show how a functional programmer would do that I'm just going to add in underneath the kind of initialization function. Uh, we'll just go public uh, void uh, perimeter. Uh, yeah. And I'm going to take two values in. I'm going to take an integer value of height. An integer value of width, and then I'm just gonna open that up. 
I guess I could return. Doesn't have to be void, I guess. It could be public int. Uh, it's going to error until I go return. Um, Go it answer to limit my error checking. Zero to start. Why is that doing? Okay, so that's just to, so it's not showing errors right now. So this is just a function. It's going to calculate the answer based on whatever it's given in terms of height and width. Um, in this case, um, we'll just go. Height plus, oh, let's not do that like that. Let's go answer equals height plus width. And obviously, we need perimeter, so we're going to have to multiply that, whatever that is, times 2. We'll just do that. Good enough. Okay, so basic perimeter calculation, height plus width uh, multiplied by 2 is going to give us the perimeter of any kind of square or rectangle, um, and that should be fairly straightforward. And you know what, let's just even simplify this into one line of code, okay, where we don't even need, let's initialize it and do the calculation right in one line, okay, and we just can return answer. Okay, uh, so that's fairly straightforward. Um, anyways, uh, when we want to calculate that on the perimeter, click, and so you can see my UI, I'm, when I press this button, I want to get a calculation. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to go, <coughs> um, uh, what did we say that first text box was called? Text box height getting back in here. So we want to go, we will say uh, integer. So let's just call the perimeter function. Perimeter dot let's take in uh, the value of that first text box. So let's go text box height dot uh, text box height text this is probably not the way I should be doing this but uh, Int dot parse. What I'm doing right now here is I'm just taking whatever is put in that text box value. This is with no error checking, so right, this might not be the best way to code. Um, give me a second. Okay, sorry. Uh, what uh, this turns into, uh, what I'm really doing, I'm just taking two integer value arguments here. Probably this is a really terrible way to do this in the fact that I probably should have separate integers that are holding these values rather than directly doing this. Uh, basically, I'm taking two arguments that I set up in the, up here it needs to be an inter, integer value. So I'm changing the text box text value into an integer uh, with that parse there, and then it's taking those arguments in there. Uh, really, not a good way to do things because if I enter any hit the calculate button with anything but an integer in that text box, um, it's going to error on me. So I'm just not going to do that. But I, error checking is a topic for another day and, and try and catch statements and how you can do different things like that. Anyway, so basically I'm, I'm taking my function. I've declared a function up here, which you should already know about. 
uh, and I'm basically putting that down here, okay? Uh, I'm calling that perimeter uh, function, and since per perimeter actually returns an integer value, uh, I can actually uh, display that in a label right away. Um, so I, not only I, you know, am I running that function, but I actually am returning a value. So let's go take a look at what label I have for perimeter. I had, uh, I don't like it when it's set up like that. Uh, name label perimeter. Okay, so I'm, I can actually display that right now. Uh, label uh, perimeter dot text equals and this I can put actually to string and it's a lot of converting I don't know if I want to do all that but that's okay so <laughs> this is a way to put a whole bunch of things in one line of code uh, that is very difficult to read basically what I'm doing uh, is when I hit the calculate button it's gonna change the label text okay to uh, uh, it's going to calculate perimeter here, okay, and put this to string. Let me change this in a minute so it's easier to read, uh, and change then that calculation to a string. Uh, and let's just check and see if this works really quickly. Uh, here we go. Let's put in a value here. Let's run our program, okay, and let's put in three and five. And if I go perimeter, I get a value of 18. So that's calculating correctly. Like I said, not really great coding style, um, but the logic is, is sound as long as I don't put anything that's outside an integer value there that works. Okay. Uh, so let's do the same kind of thing for our area button, and then I'm going to show you um, how someone that's not a functional programmer, this is a function, uh, would do that. So let's do another uh, function here, and let's, again, we'll call it public integer area and again we're going to take an int a height value as an argument and an integer value of width as an argument and <coughs> let's go here and then we can go int answer uh, we can use the same value here because this is within that uh, equals um, and in this case we're going to go uh, height times width and colon and then from here um, we can go return uh, answer and we're in business okay and I should that should disappear there now okay so this is just a simple function to calculate area and so that's going to work with our square again uh, and work fine. And so now with our, we're just going to create another event handler. The easiest way again to do that is just double click the button. You could go over here and, and choose click uh, to, is it just click or is it mouse click? Uh, let's just do default, double click there. Anyways, so I have a new event handler here uh, within that. Let's just code this a little bit better. Um, let's go uh, integer box height equals uh, we'll go int dot parse this is just in C sharp a way we get uh, an integer value from text text box height dot text the value of that text box uh, and then that's going to be a little int again. It doesn't have any error checking here, so width integer box width equals int dot parse. That int dot parse, like I said, is just taking that text value of the text and turning it into um, uh, um, integer. Okay, and so again, without any error checking, it's going to do that. And then we just wanted to have um, some kind of value here. Uh, let's go label area dot text equals. Oh, let's do a calculation here. 
Let's go. Okay, so I got cut off at the 15 minute mark there. Uh, it took a little longer than I planned on to show this. Uh, but what we just went through, uh, we had uh, two functions up here, uh, and I was just in the process of uh, setting uh, the label area text when on this button click to uh, hopefully it was the function above here, area function. So we're going to say <coughs> area and inside our area we can put in two values, box height and we can also take in box width. Now because we're setting this to a text though, obviously I just need to this is the function itself, okay, being called, um, but we need to turn that into a two string, so that because our text value is a string, and so that's going to make that so that works, okay. So I had a function, two functions actually. I had a function perimeter that I declared here, a fun function here that I declare. Uh, I kind of really shortcutted this line here. This is a little bit ugly to do that big conversion there. Um, both of these. Um, uh, van handlers here, also the inside, don't have any error checking, so if I entered anything besides an integer, this would not work. Um, <coughs> but, um, for our purpose, it's going to be fine. Uh, I have just initiated an integer value here, an integer value here, that's going to take what's in that first text box, take what's in the second text box, and then we're going to take those values and we're going to do use them uh, as arguments in that function area, and that's going to do a calculation. Let's just make sure this is working. Uh, and then I'm going to show you how uh, an object-oriented programmer would, would do this instead. Okay, so I'll put some values in here. Let's just go 6 and 7. Perimeter, 26. That makes sense. Area, 42. That makes sense as well. Okay, so <clears throat> this is functional programming. Make some functions, apply them. Okay, subroutines, whatever you want to call them. Methods. Anyways, um, an object-oriented programmer would probably have something or a class that would serve as a template and it would have specific jobs. In this case, uh, I want a class that its job is just box calculator. It's going to calculate anything box related. Okay, and so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go up to here and I'm just going to add a new class to my solution. So, wrong one, I'll click on here, right click, and I just want to go add new. It's new, but I want it to be specific. It's a class. Okay, and I'm going to call this actually box calculator. Okay, and I'm just going to hit add. Now, what I'm going to do inside my box calculator, this you created a new class, and so I can go back and forth between these two. What I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to cut my two functions out because those are tasks that should be tasks of a box calculator. And I'm going to cut those out, and I'm going to put those inside the box calculator. I'm just going to go, uh, let's just go paste. Okay, so I have now, I have a class, it's called box calculator, that has two functions, one that calculates perimeter, one that calculates area. Now I'm going to have errors back in my, just kind of main class here now. It doesn't know where that perimeter is coming from, it doesn't know where that area is coming from. So, uh, because I removed those functions. So, if I want to use these functions that are stored over inside Box Calculator, now Box Calculator is in the namespace Windows Forms application, but currently we don't have a box class. Think of the Box Calculator as a template for an object. Okay, so maybe it's it could be a car, it could be whatever. This is the template, but now I need to initiate an actual object of the class Box Calculator. So. The way I would do that, and I'll just go inside my main form, I'm just going to make one uh, new box. So I'm just going to go box calculator. Notice that it recognized that because it's in the namespace. And I'm going to call it, uh, let's call it new, new calculator. Sure, new calculator. And then I'm going to go equals new box calculator and you have to put it there. So what this has done here is it's made a new object based on the template of this box calculator class. So it actually has all the functions that are present there 
okay, in this new object. It has the, a perimeter function. It has an area function. So when I go back over here now, this still doesn't know that, okay? What I actually would do just to change this code, okay, is all I would need to do is put in here new calculator dot perimeter and it's then it's just taking those values so it may seem like a little bit of code but if you think about how what this can do is it can really clean up your code by moving all things related to calculating box okay to its separate place okay over in this class and so all I've done is now that I've initiated this this new object okay based on box calculator class and then now it has that perimeter function, and I've called that perimeter function there, and it can calculate that. And then I would have to do the same thing here, okay, if I was going to use that new calculator. Okay, and now it has a, it has a, this is new calculator. Inside new calculator, it has that area function, okay. I'm taking in a local value from here, and I'm turning that into a string, and that works just fine, okay. So the way... Um, difference between a functional programmer and an object-oriented programmer is you think to think of things as, as having jobs and being objects, okay? Like if it was a cow object, well, a cow would do several things. A cow might run, a cow might eat, a cow might poop. Whatever cows do, okay, would be included inside that cow class. In this case, we have a box calculator class that handles any kind of calculations, based on a box, okay? And so I have that calculator that's going to do that. Um, you can see how we initialize that and then just call it, okay? And in this case, I have to convert it all back to a string for me to have an output, okay? So hopefully that gives you an idea of what the heck a class is, okay? Like this box calculator class, how to access the functions from a class within kind of your main kind of program. So let's just make sure that this is working fine. And we can see uh, whatever numbers I can put in there. Uh, here we go. Calculate, calculate. Okay. Uh, hopefully this gives you at least somewhat of an understanding of the difference between functional programming and object-oriented programming. Learning what a class is and how objects are based on that class. Okay. That's it for this tutorial.